I'm trying a new device on the side called the Buffalo Optimism Meter. May need to work out the kinks like the bills do, but it's safe for long. So far, fan optimism is at 100% after returning to the playoffs and drafting the QB of the future. The Bills choose as their week one starter, Nathan Peterman. Don't worry, it's not going to be a shit show like his start last year was. It's even worse. The entire fucking offense grinds to a halt as Peter Meme and his mediocre compatriots are foiled at every turn. 33 yards of total offense in the first half. You know it's awful when your QB rating is absolute zero. As for the D, skinned alive like a fish in the Chesapeake, torched and charred by Jumbo Joe Flacco and the Checkdown Circus. 47 points worth of it. It goes so horribly that Peter Meme is benched for first round pick Josh Allen. It is a tremendous upgrade from cataclysmically horrific to simply trash. This is when Bills fans realize their best QB is still Andy Dalton. <laughs> Perhaps trading AJ McCarron to the Raiders wasn't such a good idea after all, huh? I'm gonna try and bring out the Buffalo Optimism Meter once again. They are back to a relatively healthy 60% after a stunning and impressive victory over Minnesota in the Dome. Now they fly to the real Wisconsin to face the Pack Arena. That would be optimistic, there is no such thing in this league. Buffalo is dominated in every way, shape, and or form against a team with a bunch of question marks on it. And this wasn't because of Aaron Rodgers, it was thanks to the Packers D. You do realize this defense isn't that good, right? Josh Allen returned to being a rookie and the optimism meter crashed again. Back to the R&D department. The classic Titans-Bills rivalry where every painful Music City miracle is matched with an immaculate 35-3. The name of the game is the field goal, a deliciously meager staple of the Titan diet. Buffalo may have scored a touchdown early, but that's roughly all either of these teams would muster. It was one of those scrummy defensive games that is ugly to both play and watch. Tennessee has taken the lead late with, yes, a field goal, but Buffalo is charging and has a chance to win. Good snap, the kick is good! The table shall burn and be broken throughout the night. Last we checked in on the Bills, the Buffalo Optimism Meter was reintroduced at, let's say, 20%. They held on for victory at home last week and are facing another team with glaring flaws. So far, the result of this game has been more offensive ineptitude. Despite the Texans continuing to trip over themselves like a toddler and the defense doing their part, the Bills can't do anything of note besides a few field goals. When you think it can't get worse, Josh Allen gets injured. Enter the return of Peter Me. He bumbles around to give Buffalo the lead. What the hell? Am I seeing reality? The Bills might win it. Oh my glorious God. Peter Me. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Better luck next time, Buffalo! All Pagula's gas wells and all his men couldn't put this broken table together again. The newest concoction from the Buffalo Labs has been lathered in the finest of spirits. The Buffalo Inebriation Meter. Who needs optimism when you can drown your pain in bourbon? After last week's injury to Josh Allen, Peter Meme proved that he is the most accurate passer to the opposition. Despite this, there's a new starter in town. Derek Anderson! <laughs> <laughs> no, you aren't in a time warp. This is 2018 and Derek Anderson is starting a game. As his corpse is stuffed into a mannequin and controlled by McDermott on the sidelines, he does as poorly as everyone expects. And it's against the Colts. The Colts have nothing besides Andrew Luck. Did I mention Andrew Luck marches all over that so-called defense you guys have? You somehow managed to score five points in this game. That deserves a damn son. And that also deserves a stomach pump. The Bills are going to single-handedly win Kaepernick his collusion case. And here it comes, stumbling in from the right, the Buffalo inebriation meter. Where the alcohol tolerance is somehow higher than this city's tolerance for the Bills. Who are they playing tonight anyway? The Patriots. Buffalo, you need to pregame harder than this to survive. Excited about the upside from last week's ineptitude, they have chosen to start Derek Anderson again. Complimentary shots at Bankers Club for everyone in attendance. Surprisingly, this game isn't an outright massacre as believed. The Bills D puts up a gutsy and valiant effort, and that's not because Josh Gordon was benched for a quarter for tardiness. They keep the game in check for three quarters. Such a performance shouldn't be wasted. You forget the sandbags they call an offense. This offense is so bad that watching it can be seen as cruel and unusual punishment. I feel that all football fans should have a mandatory conscription to watch this offense in action, as to witness what sheer pain looks like. They're the fat kid you pick last in dodgeball, the class dunce forced to sit in the corner, the cook that can't even boil an egg properly. Even then, this does not come close to describing such a travesty. And good news, Buffalo, Derek Anderson was mercifully injured by the Patriots. 
now enter Oh, jeez, it's, it's Peter Mame. I feel the meter is going to die of cirrhosis before the end of the year. Patriots, you looked like shit, but here's your free win. Bring it out, gentlemen. The inebriation meter is back in business. In fact, we need a drinking base for this week. Winter is coming in Buffalo. Canada still has the best view of the falls. The Sabres aren't putrid shit. Let's go about 30 beers, that should do it. The good news is that Derek Anderson is out with a concussion, open a cold one. The bad, they have no choice but to start Peter Mead. Better double that now. For those of you that started the Bears defense in fantasy, despite their injuries, you can thank them for your free win. Peter Meme lived up to his reputation once again by throwing three interceptions and yet another pick six. This team is fucking awful. They have fewer passing touchdowns than NFL wide receivers. Their own receivers couldn't catch a cold during the Black Death. Their defense is stretched and penetrated like Goatsy, and the year is a fucking disaster. How the fuck does a drinking meter overload on alcohol? Only in Buffalo. This year is vintage comedy for the rest of us. Please keep it up. Oh my, what an exhilarating matchup this is going to be. A former USC phenom up against a travesty of a team. Did I mention Sam Darnold's not playing? Yep, Peter Meme is so awful that he's been replaced by former Trojan Matt Barkley, who is somehow still alive. Oh my god, I figured it out. It's a Phantom Tank Bowl! It was a bit questionable at first, but these moves have them pivoting towards that sweet, sweet reward of that top draft pick. Buffalo has been fucking awful, but they, like San Francisco before them, didn't understand the rules of the game. They are fracking them like a Pagula gas well, draining them of all their beautiful resources as Jets fans re-experience the equivalent of the fake spike. Buffalo, you can come out of hiding again. Fuck it, let's bring out both meters. Who cares about all the chiropractor bills? These tables aren't going to break themselves. This isn't any standard butt fumbling from the Jets. This is a goddamn master's thesis of butt fumbling. Such epic failure. Against that offense, against that quarterback. How the fuck does Todd Bowles still have this job? He can go Rooney roll his way straight to the back of the Boogermobile. Fucking useless. An AFC East clash with a surprising amount of playoff implications once again for the Dolphins. This time, it's against the Bills. Yes, they're the Bills, but they have won back-to-back -back games. It's a stunning accomplishment, just like Josh Allen running all over you guys on your home turf. Tannehill is having a solid game and Miami has the lead, but it is Buffalo. This isn't exactly a shining accomplishment. Even with this, they're still in the game, you know. Or they'll blow it because they sack themselves out of relevance. Real teams would make sure that's the end, but oh right, you went three and out. The unthinkable has happened. Buffalo controls their own destiny. Allen, dancing out of the pocket, chased by Quinn, nowhere to go. Allen goes back the other way, picks up a block. Allen now fires towards the end zone, and it is incomplete! It would be nice if their receivers could catch the ball. That would be a welcome change. The Dolphins escape with an ugly victory. The refs weren't so lucky. The Bills know a thing or two about ref ball in their heyday. They're vets.